Greetings everyone, thanks for checking this out. It's been a long time since I've done a video, um, so I figured it would be a good time to check in. Uh, my name is Derek Michaels, for those of you who don't know me personally, and I'm a Baltimore-based saxophonist and concert presenter and private teacher, and we're in the midst of an unprecedented global pandemic, uh, which I think probably everybody watching this is aware of by now. I think we're, we're seven or eight months into that at this point. So I'm making this video on October 30th, and we are just about a month before my 35th birthday. And with this whole year having been essentially uh, cleared, you know, my schedule's been cleared, my concerts have all been canceled, all of the things that I've been working toward in my own artistic life in the last number of years have been geared toward um, essentially connecting people, musicians on the stage with an audience uh, in front of a stage uh, around this idea of improvisation as a unifying force, um, a positive unifying force, uh, if that wasn't self-evident in unifying. So, and there's this beautiful aspect of, of the sensations, of the experience of making um, rich, resonant, acoustic sounds together. And, and oh, oh, by the way, uh, completely improvised concerts is what I've been doing uh, for the better part of the last two years. So you step out on stage, you have no idea what sounds are going to happen, and you're fully participating in creating a moment and watching it unfold together. The musician uh, is on equal footing with the audience in terms of observing what happens now, what happens next. Um, so there is a direct correlation between that experience of what it is that I had been able to do uh, with so many wonderful musicians for so many wonderful audiences pre-COVID and um, of course what it is that I hope to do post-COVID, on the other side of this pandemic, quarantine, uh, uncertainty. But this envelope of time in the middle has been uncertain in its own ways, as we've all experienced. And there is a connection between that uh, unfolding, that seeing from one moment to the next, what's going to come up now? Um, I've been able to aim all that energy inward to a large degree. I've been very fortunate to uh, be able to uh, get by without having to find some kind of a job to go and work 40 hours a week in order to keep a roof over my head. Um, I think it's PUA has made it possible for uh, myself and many musicians like me to collect some unemployment, which is wonderful. and not really happened in the history of my life, if at all, in this country. And it's it, there's been enough comfort in those ways to allow many open hours to sit and really investigate. What can I do with my time and my energy and my instrument? Um, while we're not sure if it's safe to be playing a saxophone or a trumpet or singing uh, into a room full of people, um, I have decided to forego the live stream performance experience and to forego the socially distanced outdoor performances uh, in order to concentrate as much energy as possible um, around an internal investigation. Um, and what I'm finding in that investigation, in that line of inquiry, uh, is difficult to describe and would take a long time in this particular video, but it's been an, an encouraging experience for me. I'm somebody who has thrived on the opportunity to perform constantly, to uh, perform with many different people in different contexts, most days of most weeks in the course of most months of most years for the last uh, 10 plus years. And having that taken away for the better part of a year has been tough. Um, not having that sort of interaction that I was describing earlier in the video uh, with other musicians in the same space and with uh, audience members in the same space really created uh, some difficulty for me in those first couple of months. But what, uh, what opportunity has presented itself 
is to put the interaction between myself and my instrument and the space that I'm playing in and the music that arises in the moment under a microscope. Not necessarily always analytically under a microscope, but just uh, heightening my receptiveness to um, essentially attenuating myself to feeling what it is that's happening while it's happening. Uh, sometimes that means I'm just holding my instrument and not making a sound and listening for an idea that might want to come out. And other times it means blindly sending some energy at the saxophone without having anything in my ear and just he being surprised by the sound that arises from it. Uh, all of this, of course, has uh, direct uh, impact and um, some kind of, it's almost like tr perfect training for an improvising musician who's responding and reacting to things on stage. Um, but again, I'm not so much worrying right now about what can I do now in order to sound better when I play the next time. Uh, it's really been about getting the most out of what is right in front of me while I can. So it's not just been musically, it's been taking care of cleaning the house that I live in, taking care of appreciating time to spend with, uh, with my cats and my partner who I live with, uh, mindfully cooking delicious food and mindfully eating it and really tasting the excellent cups of coffee that I make in the morning. I could go on and I won't. Um, I say all of this because we have no idea what's coming in the next several months other than the fact that it's going to be winter in our hemisphere and it's probably going to be pretty cold and it's probably going to be really tough to continue playing outdoor gigs for captive audiences uh, in incidental situations. So for those of you who have been doing excellent work in keeping live music happening throughout this pandemic, I salute you uh, for being resilient and resourceful and tenacious. It's a beautiful thing. It's going to be really tough to do that now. And if you're like me, you're very concerned about the health and safety of yourself and your potential audience moving forward. And if we're going to be indoors playing wind instruments into a room full of people, we're not so sure what the ramifications may or may not be. So if you're like me and you're looking at the next number of months as, yeah, we probably have another handful of months before it's going to be safe to be performing with other people again, you might be asking, asking yourself, what on earth am I supposed to do in order to make creative use of this time and to get the most out of the moment without feeling like everything is just passing us by? So if you're a person who um, is feeling the weight, you know, a lot of us really, you know, I'm an introverted person. It's very easy for me to gather energy over a long period of time without social interaction. I understand that's not true for everybody. So that isolation might be very tough for you. If you feel the need to reach out and talk about some of this stuff, I love talking about it. I'd love to connect with you just to have a conversation. Um, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can find my email at baltimoresaxophone.com. I'm putting this up on Facebook. You can message me here. That's cool too. Um, if you are looking for ways of really taking advantage of this opportunity to find some new ways to explore creativity and explore creative use of your time and explore your instrument in new ways uh, and you're looking for a fresh perspective on how to go about that and you might be interested in private lessons, I'd love to connect with you too. So this is partially an advertisement for the fact that I'm offering online lessons, uh, but I wanted to say everything up front that I did because really what's most important is, is just to share our personal experiences that we all have our own unique ways of processing what's happening right now and I feel like I have something to offer for folks who are looking to make uh, peace with what's happening right now. If you think that you can make peace, which I believe you can, with a lot of time alone, with an instrument, in a space, to just explore like you're a kid again, uh, especially for professional level players who, you know, you're used to hitting deadlines. You know, you've got recording dates, you've got performances, you've got repertoire you need to get together. You've got these, you know, you've got your feet held to the fire in most circumstances. And now there's none of that. No one's holding your feet to the fire, but you. There are a million ways to go about making use of that energy. And I think I might have a unique lens 
on how to thrive creatively and grow without a feeling of pressure, without a feeling of, oh shit, I better get this together because this thing's coming up. Um, I know for a lot of you who are really inspiring to me out there, you thrive when a deadline is coming and you would better be ready to knock this thing out of the park. Uh, but without deadlines being set for you right now, you might be wondering, what can I do to make the most of this period of time? So if that's you and you might be interested in a couple of coaching sessions or a couple of uh pointed instrument lessons or improvisation lessons or composition lessons, anything that you might be interested uh, to take you from where you are to where it is that you're looking to go. The distance between those two things is probably a lot closer than you think and there's no better time than now to dig into that and what might be possible on the other end of it is you could come through this crazy situation feeling more like yourself as a creative artist than you did when we came into this period of time. And wouldn't that be a beautiful thing to be able to do to empower yourself that way. So if I can help you in some way, please let me know. Again, the website's baltimoresaxophone.com. My name's Derek Michaels. Thanks for checking this out. Everybody take care. I'll see you on the other side. Thanks.